Executive Suites with WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. It's a tumultuous time to be a leader in the healthcare industry. Changes wrought by President Obama's health law and relentless pressure to hold down skyrocketing cost growth have altered the landscape for hospitals, doctors, and insurers alike. Rhode Island has been in the vanguard thanks to the relatively smooth launch of its HealthSource RI marketplace, which is gearing up for year two by adding a new competitor to challenge Blue Cross and Neighborhood by selling plans direct to individuals. The nation's largest health insurer, United Healthcare. This week on Executive Suite, the CEO of United. United Healthcare of New England, Stephen Farrell. Welcome to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi. Always glad to do a healthcare show because it's just one of the most interesting and uh, far reaching industries we have here in Rhode Island. And so, very glad to welcome Steve Farrell from United Monte. Steve, Thank thanks you. for being here. Thank you for having me. So, uh, let's start for people at home. You know, the different insurers can get a little confusing to them who's where and what. United Health. United Health Group is a big national company, biggest insurer in the country. Mm -hmm. How big is your division, United Healthcare of New England, and how does it fit into the larger United Health enterprise? So we are all United Healthcare New England here in Rhode Island. Uh, we are 280,000 members. We're 550 employees over three locations: Providence, Warwick, and Lincoln. Uh, we're in commercial group business, large and small. We're in the exchange. We have Medicare Advantage. We're in Right Care in the Medicaid program. So we're really in all aspects of healthcare here in Rhode Island. I sometimes hear people reference United as, oh, it's like a new player in the market, even though United's been here for quite a while now, right? So uh, we started actually as Ocean State Master Health Plan in 1979 and became totally United Healthcare in 1991. Uh, so we're many decades into this, and I th I feel we're really part of the healthcare fabric of this state. So, uh, but it's Rhode Island, so everything has to be more than two, three centuries old That's before right. people say it's localized. Right. Yeah. Um, I was looking back through some of the interviews you've given over the years. You said no four. Wow, a year after you became CEO, your goal to increase United's Rhode Island reach by about 100,000 members, get your market share to 35 or 40 percent. Your decade on from then, how are you feeling about you know the growth in the years since since you were setting those goals? Did I say that? Terrific! The, the I think journal. we hit that goal. <laughs> I think we're about 35 percent right now, and we weren't back then. And you know we've got prominent uh, relationships with the state of Rhode Island and the employee account as, a, as an example. And like I mentioned, a big deal of that is uh, a big part of that is because we have so many different populations now with ACA that need to be addressed. And ACA, uh, the Affordable Care the Act, the Affordable Health Care Law. Act. So we are really uh, making a push to be involved in every single kind of population that's looking for health care. And when you look forward from where you are now today, uh, where do you see growth coming from around? Is it primarily uh, consumer, direct consumer things like through the exchange? Is it businesses? Is it trying to get more cities and towns to be buying through United? So uh, those are all great questions. And the first one is, let's say, Health Source Rhode Island and the exchange. We were in the exchange in 2014 for a small group called SHOP. Uh, we have intentions and are planning to be in the exchange in 2015 for individuals. Uh, we're very excited about that. Uh, there are an awful lot of uninsured individuals coming into uh, coverage now and, and um, into the exchange. And that population of people, for many decades, never had any competition. Now they have competition. We think it's an area of growth. It's something we're focusing on. So uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield obviously is the, is the uh, big uh, elephant in the room when it comes to health insurance in Rhode Island. I know United's been fighting hard for years, very giving them some real competition. Um, uh, what do you think explains the, the persistent uh, hold Blue Cross has so heavily in this market? And do you see that changing? Have you seen that changing in your 10 years? It, you know, I do see that changing because I, I see that uh, health care overall has been uh, elevated in terms of how people look at health care. It wasn't such a big deal until the Affordable Care Act. Now that there's a mandate, now that there are subsidies, now people have to think about where I'm getting coverage and what I'm paying. It's at the top of people's minds. And as it is, they realize there are alternatives. There are other carriers. There are different values that they can get when they're shopping. And it's that point that we're trying to focus on and meet their needs and provide good competition. 
And uh, the question that I always get when people hear health insurance executives coming on, how much is my premium going up next year? I know that's, that can be hard to summarize in a sound bite, but you know, what do you say to people when you get that? It is, and it all depends. Are you, and is it going up? And for a lot, it's not going up. For a lot, and as a result of the uh, Affordable Care Act and some changes we made, it went down for a lot of people. So uh, you're right, it's different for everybody. It depends if you're Medicaid, Medicare, commercially insured, an individual uh, purchaser. Uh, so your premium scenario really changes. But is it a focus of ours to make healthcare uh, more affordable and higher quality services? It's our job number one. So uh, nationwide, you kind of allude to this, we're seeing some evidence of a slowdown in how fast medical costs go up, to be clear to people. It's not, right. not necessarily that it's going down, it's just not going right. up as fast as it right. had been. Right. Uh, when you look at Rhode Island specifically, mm -hmm. in the Rhode Island healthcare market, mm -hmm. lifespan, the doctors, you guys, yeah. everything, do you see evidence of a cost growth slowdown in Rhode Island, or is it not hitting here? It is, uh, I think it's hit in the entire country there was some slowdown over the past few years. Um, I think we will continue to see uh, costs being moderated uh, as an industry, as a population. Uh, the, I think the real question and the challenge is, it, will that moderation of health care cost be as fast as people want it to be? Do you, what do you think? Do you think it could be? Uh, I hope that it will be. We are actively in uh, strategic activities around how can we slow down healthcare cost growth. Uh, for example, we are transforming how we pay for healthcare. We don't want to pay for healthcare on a per visit, per occurrence basis anymore. We want to pay for a quality healthcare outcome. And with that, we hope that healthcare costs get reduced and healthcare quality gets increased. And of course, that affects overall cost of care as well. And uh, good examples of that would be 55% uh, of our primary care physicians in our network in Rhode Island are in some type of alternative payment model, like an accountable care organization or a patient-centered medical home or some other so value. Trying to get away from just uh, you did you check my ear, you get 50 bucks for that. You That's did right. This, you get 60 bucks for that. that Paying for quality health outcomes, making sure you, Ted, are healthy at the end of the day. Tough and, job. Uh, it is a tough <laughs> job. But we have those relationships with uh, provider groups like Lifespan or Coastal Medical and groups like that. Uh, so we're doing those types of things. Um, the other thing we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, uh, approach cost affordability of healthcare, not just from how we pay providers and interact with the healthcare system, but how do we interact, engage, and empower the healthcare consumer the individual, our member, or the patient, however you want to refer to individuals, we want to give them the tools and the information necessary to be good healthcare consumers and help themselves and the system get higher quality, lower costs. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk much more with Steve Farrell from United Healthcare of New England about their plans for HealthSource RI, Rhode Island's Obamacare Affordable Care Act marketplace, whatever you want to call it, we're going to talk about it. Stick with us on Executive Suite. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi, and we're talking this week all about healthcare with a guy who knows it very well, Stephen Farrell. He's CEO of United Healthcare of New England, which has, I think he said, almost 300,000 members now That's in Rhode Island. Correct. Yes. Uh, so let's talk about HealthSource RI. This is, people probably by now familiar with it, the marketplace Rhode Island state government set up under the Affordable Care Act, President Obama's law, to help people buy insurance. Um, United was on from the very beginning on the small business mm -hmm. side, this shop, it's called. Uh, to sell there and now uh, you've put in the plans to start selling if ever all the approvals go through to individuals as well which uh, is interesting partly because Blue Cross hasn't really had much of any competition on the individual side in quite a while right. so what was the calculus there why did United and United Health decide yes we're gonna go for the individual market and around on health source so uh, health care for many years was primarily health insurance uh, employer based and uh, it's really changing and uh, the individual market is growing. There are uh, subsidies coming from the uh, Affordable Care Act. Uh, so the makeup of where people get health insurance and how they get it has been changing. And as it changes, we will address the market accordingly. And you're right, there hasn't been a lot of competition in the individual market. 
and we're darn happy to be in that market now and provide some competition, and we're looking forward to it. And when you talk about competition, you know, what's going to be your pitch uh, to Rhode Islanders who haven't even, have never seen United pop up as an option for an individual plan? Is it cost? Is it how you'll design the plan? Something else? Oh, you're very good, Ted. It's, it's all that. So it's one, they get to see something they haven't seen before. It's two, it's always about cost. It's a very cost-sensitive population, and we will be driving a very aggressive premium, of course, if we get approved. And then uh, lastly, we're an innovator in this marketplace, have always been, and we want to put innovative plans and approaches to getting health, health benefits in the hands of individuals to give them more options that suit their personal needs. Do you think it's possible when people go on HealthSource this year, if they're buying as an individual, they'll see cheaper options than what was available in terms of premiums last year? Uh, I, do I think it's possible? Absolutely, I think it's possible. Yes, I do. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, United started selling to small businesses on HealthSource immediately from the start. All right. three uh, plans were in there. Uh, how's that gone? How's the take up been? How's it worked? Well, we've had uh, a little bit of slow growth, moderate growth. Uh, it, it's uh, an accommodation to the uh, open market for small businesses. So. I, I don't think anybody really expected a lot of growth in the first year. I think that's a long-term play. I think everybody understands it. We're in it for the long term. And, uh, you know, more generally, you know, we've seen, certainly with the federal site and some of the other state websites, concerns expressed by insurers about the back end, the stuff we as consumers can't see, uh, the way the computer systems talk to each other, things like that. I mean, how has that gone with HealthSource from, from uh, United's perspective? Is it working on the back end for the insurers? You know, number one, we've enjoyed a terrific relationship with the Health Source Rhode Island staff here. Uh, I would tell you from my perspective that this state-based exchange enjoys a very good reputation nationally as being one of the best operating, best run. Uh, we really didn't have a lot of issues in our first year on the small group shop exchange. Uh, as we talk to them about our participation next year on the individual exchange, I don't think it could be any better. Will it be perfect? Nothing ever is, but I think they're doing great work here. Um, so it sounds like I had a question to ask you how committed is United to staying on health sources a year to year decision, but it sounds like, you know, the extent you get involved in these exchanges, you plan to stick around on them year to year. I think you do. I, I, I can't imagine having a year to year decision of this magnitude and weight. I think if we make a strategic direction to be in, we're looking to be in. Does that mean I can predict the future? I can't. Uh, but absolutely, when we think uh, that this is the place to be, uh, I think that's a long-term decision. There's also a debate here uh, on, you know, should the state keep health source or I should Rhode Island just go to healthcare.gov? I mean, does United, do the other insurers take a position on that? Will you just deal with it, whatever decision policymakers? Well, make? I couldn't speak for the other insurers. Uh, I don't think we're going to take a position on that. I think Health Source Rhode Island is very capable of making their uh, values known to this state. And uh, however that works its way out through the process here in the coming months, uh, I think we'll be able to be flexible enough to work with whatever that decision is. Uh, on the kind of the same how it works point, Peter Andrusevich from uh, your, co your counterpart at Blue Cross Rhode Island, uh, when he was on the show, expressed concern about how you pay for health source in the sense that if it's all put into the premiums of the folks on there, it could become very expensive for them. Uh, yeah, that's true. Do you have any, have, have you guys put forward any ideas on the right way to pay for it or, or a way that is the wrong way that you don't want to see? So, you know, we're talking about economies of scale and the exchange and all of them, they have large fixed cost that has to be accounted for somewhere. So it really doesn't matter where the payment comes from. It's going to be a burden. We understand that. Uh, any additional cost in the healthcare system is tough to handle. So um, I don't have the magic ball. Uh, we participate in the conversation, and like I said, uh, at the very least, we don't want to be a barrier to the outcome. We will be flexible, depending on where this goes, and address the population, because at the end of the day, the important thing is people who need insurance need to get it at quality insurance, affordable. It's a new population. We want to be in there, serve that population, regardless of how the rest of the you know, the politics and the finances work out. One interesting piece of all this on exchanges with United uh, caught my attention was United has also announced plans to open a private exchange in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. This would be United plans only and mm -hmm. you would operate the exchange. 
I'm curious, how did what's what's the what's the thinking there? Why is it good to have a united only private exchange? Is it do you see it in direct competition with health source? Is it something different? What's the what's the use of that? Well, uh, number one, uh, and we're talking a lot about different populations. Things change. People have different values and need different solutions. And groups, small groups and large groups, may have different thoughts about how they want to purchase their insurance. Uh, so we have introduced a small group private exchange. In January, we'll be introducing a large group private exchange here. We're the first in the market. We're an innovator to have a private exchange here. And the value there is, is that employers can stay with a suite of United Healthcare products, some of them very innovative, and have one bill, one service team, uh, one relationship, make it very simple for that employer while you know, contributing towards their employees' benefits and maximizing the, the choices that their employees have through a number of different uh, uh, plan designs. And, and if an employer values that, we want to come to the table and, and give them that solution through a private exchange. But you'll still be selling classic, you know, they pick the plan, sure. everybody gets it, plans too. Sure, of Just course, yes. Many, many, many options. Sure. It's always getting more complicated. That's All right, right, we're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about why healthcare is so darn expensive and what can be done about it. Stick with us on Executive Suite. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Vesey, and we're talking this week with the CEO of United Healthcare of New England, Stephen Farrell. And uh, we're obviously talking about Rhode Island, Stephen. But how many mm -hmm. states do you have inside that New England umbrella? All six. All six are now. All six. Yeah, That's so right. you, you're always jetting around. To I the, love to jet around New England. <laughs> see all over New England, especially when the leaves change. Right. We love it. Um, so let's talk about health, the cost of health insurance. We've been talking about that all through mm -hmm. this conversation, in a way. You know. Rhode Island, we see the studies come out, and Rhode Island health insurance premiums are quite high mm -hmm. compared to other states. Why do you think that is? Is it just it's an expensive state? Are we using it more? Is it the mandated benefits? What do you see there? So there's so many things to contribute to cost here. Uh, one, we have an aging population in Rhode Island. Uh, we've got uh, the influx of the Affordable Care Act with that new entrance into the system that haven't been taking care of health care, now they have access to it, drives up rates. Uh, United Healthcare puts out an annual uh, America's top uh, health care rankings by state. Uh, Rhode Island has dropped down. We're now number 19. Uh, so we've got a lot of challenge in terms of uh, contributors to growing health care here. Are there, the is there low-hanging fruit? Are there things you think, you know, if the state did that, boy, you'd see a real change in the cost of care here, or is it, is it so many different things all, that all are? If there are a lot of different things. Uh, we talked about earlier transforming health care at the pay-for-services level. That's low-hanging fruit. I think everybody in the health care system in the state is participating in that. Uh, but I would tell you the other part, the other side of that equation is, and I mentioned this earlier, it's the individual. And can the employer uh, provide in benefit plans to an individual? And can we do, through, do the same through the exchange where we can guide the individual to better performing physicians and hospitals and health care uh, providers? And can we link them to those that we're paying for good, healthy outcomes through their benefit plan? And so can we compound those activities? And that's a big focus with us. And we think there's a lot of value in the compounding of, of interests and engaging and aligning the all parties. How durable, though, do you think employer-based health insurance is going to be going forward? There's so much talk now, moving people onto exchanges and, and everything else. How much do you think people are still going to get their health insurance to work? Do you think a lot of businesses will be saying, you know what, we're not going to do it here. We'll up your pay a little and send you to the exchange? Uh, I think certain companies, certain industries will, and it's not for everybody. And I think uh, that there will always be an open, direct market, employer-based benefits uh, at certain levels. It is a value proposition in the employer-employee relationship, and uh, I think that market will always exist. Yes, some will uh, steer their folks into an exchange, and that's absolutely fine. We'll be in all 
those areas. Um, you talked about individuals, you talked about people making those choices, mm -hmm. and we've, we've talked, I feel like every healthcare show we do, we talk about consumers, you know, taking that's the reins right. and, and bringing down costs by choosing themselves, but do you see evidence that that's actually working as, as consumers get more tools and more ability to see what things cost? Do they choose the cheaper hospital for an, a, an a surgery or whatever it is? Do you find that it's working? We do. So when, when we pair uh, updated and educated uh, employees and, and individuals who we uh, give information, empower with information about healthcare choices. Uh, when we pair them along with the provider community, healthcare delivery community, who we pay for healthier outcomes, uh, we call that our modernized healthcare strategy. And uh, we look at those employer groups that have a modernized healthcare strategy compared to those that don't. And we see that they get somewhere between a 9 and 24% cost reduction because of the engagement that the employees have, that the member, the patient has in their own purchasing of healthcare services. And that's huge. You've been uh, critical at some points in the past 10 years since you got in this job of the Office of the Health Insurance Commissioner in Rhode Island, and you're not the only insurer who said, look, when you reduce the rates that we ask for, you know, we weren't kidding, that's how much we needed, now it's our finances are getting messed mm -hmm. up. Have you seen a change in how OHEC, how that office looks at that? Are you more likely to get the rates you think you need now than you were maybe five, six years ago? Well, it's a very delicate balance. I first say that we enjoy a very good relationship with the office, and um, it's it's a very complicated uh, dance that we go through annually to show what's driving up costs, what are we doing to hold that back, how much of it can be addressed in premium, how much can be addressed in how we uh, deploy strategies to lower cost. So it's uh, every year uh, it's a different set of circumstances. Uh, fortunately, uh, it's an open door over there. We go in, have a conversation, and we're maybe six or seven years in there, and every year it's been different, but we've come out with the right solution, as tough as it may be, every year, and I think we've done the same thing when we look at 2015. We only have about a minute left. As I mentioned, you've been in this sure. job now 11 years. Uh, we mm -hmm. don't always see that kind of durability yeah. in the C-suite and these yeah. kind of jobs. Uh, could you see yourself staying in this for a while? Are you getting exhausted by all the change in healthcare? I love this. I wouldn't be anywhere else. Yeah? Uh, I, hope, uh, I hope they'll have me. Why do you love it? Uh, it's challenging. Every day is something different. Uh, it keeps you on the edge of your seat, it's dynamic, and uh, uh, serving individuals, serving the communities we work in, serving our employees, making a difference in healthcare cost, uh, great stories, we told some of them before we went on air, those are the kinds of stories that motivate me day in, day out. All right, we'll leave on a positive note then. Steve thank Farrell, you. thank you so much for being with me this week, and thank you for tuning in, as always, to Executive Suite. Be sure to tune in next week. My guest will be the CEO of NanoSteel, David Pittori. They're doing cool things on a very microscopic level, but we'll try to get it a little uh, higher grade for you to see up there. If you missed any of this show or any other episode of Executive Suite, you can catch all of those on our website, WPRI.com, which now works much better on your mobile phone, so try that out if you haven't in a while. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you back here next week week on Executive Suite. Great to see you.